telling who I would be if not for grace. I could be locked up in jail, have no future, no story to tell. I know my soul would be crying from hell if not for grace. If not for grace, I would still be lost and hopeless. If not for grace, there'd be no reason to carry on. Oh, but when he looked my way, there was mercy.
right, welcome back to church on this Sunday evening. Come on in, find your place, join me, uh, with me by way of standing. Let's turn in our song books to song number 246. 246 on this evening. Let's sing Higher Ground. 246, we'll sing together. Verse number one of 246. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still pressing. been already in the ministry and praise the Lord for it and uh, I'm going to ask Brian Martini to come tonight and open us in prayer and uh, you know I love this guy he's my friend and uh, you know what I, I'm sad that uh, uh, they have stepped down but I'm happy that they have followed the Lord's will and uh, I'm, I am I am and I just want to say come I want to say that he's my friend and I love him praise and I'm praying Lord. for him and uh, praise God for it. Would you uh, give God thanks and, and uh, ask his blessing as absolutely, we open absolutely. service? Thank you. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in church tonight. And Lord, I thank you for what you are doing here at Shenandoah. And Lord, I, I just, um, I mentioned my Sunday school class today, Lord, but I'm just rejoicing over that lady saved yesterday down here at the local, local store. And Lord, I thank you for Brother Damien being sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God and follow, following the leading of him. And, Lord, I do pray tonight that you would just help us put away the cares of the day, the busyness of things, Father, and the things that has to take place tomorrow, whether it's getting the kids up and getting them off to school and us getting off to work ourselves. But, Lord, I pray you'll help us put them aside and focus on the preaching tonight, Lord, and help us to be open to the Holy Spirit of God speaking to our hearts, Lord, and however he chooses to do that, Lord, help us to purpose in our heart. We're going to follow that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, if you are a grandparent... Would you stay standing? Everybody else sit down, please. Wow. Wow, praise the Lord. Happy Grandparents Day. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Now, I've heard, I've heard the best thing about being a grandparent is that you get to send them home. But I, I don't know about all that. But uh, well, don't testify back here, all right? Just be careful. All right, good. Amen. Hey, let's pray one more time. Lord, I thank you for grandparents and what, uh, how special they are. And Lord, sometimes, uh, God, uh, we have adopted grandparents. And how many, how many times I've, I've had that in the ministry, and I thank you for that. And Lord, I thank you for the grandparents along uh, here at Shenandoah, Lord, and, and uh, all the years and the faithfulness, Lord, that is represented here among them. And thank you for the, uh, just the younger generations that have been affected and influenced because of it. And, uh, Lord, would you bless them tonight. May they uh, do well physically tonight. And, Lord, uh, spiritually as well, God, and we give you thanks. I think about so many that are uh, watching by way of Internet now, Lord, for whatever reason could not attend tonight. And, uh, Lord, you'd watch over them as well. And, again, Lord, we give you thanks so much for our grandparents. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. And, uh, amen. Some people... You know, they, they just fit the look of a grandparent. And then you got people back there like Michelle Sittinger. It's like, what's she doing being a grandparent? Amen. 
She was standing. Yeah, Bill, Bill looks old, but not Michelle. Michelle's doing okay. Amen. Amen. All right, great. And uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, do we have any guests with us tonight? Any first-timers tonight in the, in the service at all? Anybody at all over here? Nobody? Okay, all right. So we're all family tonight. I don't even have, uh, okay, I got kids waving at me. All right. Amen. All right, good. All right. Well, let's take our songbook again, please. And let's turn over to 251. 251. Now, here's a song I haven't sang in a while. 251. He lifted me. It's a good song. I was just singing through it right before service, trying to make sure I knew it. And, uh, and I was singing it, and so it's been a while. Do we know this song? Okay, three of us. All right, well, sing it out. Miss Virginia, you got to sing it out for me, all right? Somebody get her a microphone. What happened? No? Okay. Don't give it to your sister. That's dangerous right there. Oh, I love you, too. That's awesome. That's wonderful. 251. He lifted me. Ready? Let's sing together. In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim. sang one verse of it, if, who knew it now, but it sounded like I don't know it, amen. So we're going to try that first verse again, amen. Here we go, 251 on the first. In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim, and from the depths of sin and shame, through grace he lifted me, from sinking sand. a good song. How about the last now? Ready? Now on a higher plane I dwell, and with my soul I know tis well, yet how or why I cannot tell, he should have lifted me from sinking sand. another tonight. 400, please. Four, zero, zero. This is just a chorus. This is a good song. Oh, to be like thee. 400. Anybody know this one? All right, good, good. Oh, to be like thee. There's, it's a whole song, but here we just have the chorus. 400. Oh, to be like thee. Good job. All right. Ready? On the, on, uh, I was going to say on the first, on the first line. Amen. Here we go. Ready? Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep on my heart. Let's sing it again a little faster. Ready? Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, be your as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep in my heart. Amen. 
Now, Adam was made in the image of God, yes? So, if God is a spirit, then whose image was he made in? The Lord Jesus Christ, amen? The God-man, amen? God, God the Lord Jesus, right? You with me now? And the Bible says we are to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Amen. Now, physically, we have the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, but spiritually, we're supposed to be conformed to his image. Amen. Just a thought for us. It's a challenge to me that this week I need to live in such a way that I am dying to my fleshly way and, and trying to say, Lord, Holy Spirit of God, direct me in the way that you would want me to be, to be more conformable, made conformable to the image of his dear son. Amen. That's the book of Romans. That's, that's Bible. Amen. It's good when our songs match our Bible. Amen. Amen. That's good. I, I know you go, some of y'all like them 7-Eleven songs where you say seven words 11 times, you know, but they're not Bible. All right. And instead of saying the name of Jesus, you just say he and sometimes she and this thing and that thing and all this modern junk. And, you know, he's such a good friend. He's such a good friend. And you just keep doing that. Well, that's not Bible. I mean, it, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And Jesus, there is not a friend like Jesus, right? But come on now. Let's sing Bible songs. Amen. There's a lot of great songs in this songbook. Amen. If you don't have a songbook, I encourage you to get one. Okay. And make it a part of your personal time with the Lord. A lot of times when I'm spending time with the Lord, he gives me a song in my heart. Ephesians chapter 5 says that when we're filled with the Spirit, then, then we make melody in our heart to the Lord. Amen. That's Bible. And you want to know why you, some people are always walking around whistling? Maybe it's because they're filled with the Spirit. Amen. That's good. All right. And I'm preaching and it's not even. That's, amen. Hey, you just settle down back here. All right, good. Amen and amen. Um, actually, don't settle down. Come on up here. It's your turn. All right. Brother Garth uh, Piper's coming. And uh, I uh, surely enjoy him and his wife because uh, I've known them for a long time. And I've watched them. And uh, I've watched their family. And uh, they're the real deal. And I appreciate that. And uh, he's going to show a video tonight. He's going to talk about his ministry in New Zealand. And you said 24 years now. Is that right? 24 years. Yes, and um, Garth, I don't know if how much this was planning to be a part of everything, but I would ask you to talk about Zeke a little bit, if you don't, if you don't mind. And Zeke, if you remember, here back at the beginning of the year, Zeke was his grandson. He was eight years old, and we were praying for him because he had uh, cancerous tumors in his abdomen. And uh, I watched a family go through that and just blew me away at uh, how they handled that. And I'm talking about his daughter and his, and his son-in-law, and as well as him and his wife. And, and I asked him just to speak on it a little bit, because uh, we can learn some things from that. You know, God, it, God desires us to be what he wants us to be at the mountaintops and the valleys. Amen. And we can do it victoriously with the Holy Spirit of God. And I appreciate the Piper family, because they did it. And uh, just a great encouragement to the Woolards. And um, I remember praying for Zeke for a long time, and then I remember when I found out he graduated to heaven, and, and my wife and I, we broke down, was praying on the side of the bed, crying together. Uh, but, uh, but just, you have to know, the Pipers, their family, uh, he's, uh, uh, Garth is my father-in-law's cousin, and so a little bit of the reason why I know him a little better, but, I mean, he's still ugly, but we love him. And, um, it's family. It's family, it's Amen. Amen. All right, would you come? Would you talk for a little bit? Show your video, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Zeke a bit in my message a bit later, so I'll do that then. My wife's going to come. We're just going to sing a quick little song. And now, I imagine none of you have heard this song, I would guess. Now, John and Marie might have heard it years ago. Um, but when we went to New Zealand, one of the big things of culture shock for us was driving on the other side of the road. Now, that is a bit of culture shock because mm -hmm. it's totally different from what everybody else does here in America. You actually had to think while you were driving. <laughs> you know, and I know everybody here just drives automatically. You know, you just, well, maybe if you're a brand new driver, you think about it, but most people drive automatically. Well, we had to think about every turn we made and every time we'd turn on the windshield wipers or the turn signals, 
It was very embarrassing. <laughs> when I first got there and I bought a van, and the van was a, a stick shift. Now you say, well, big deal, stick shift. I've driven them my whole life. Yeah, but I never drove a stick shift with a stick in my left hand <laughs> instead of my right hand. And the, the turn signals and windshield wipers were on the wrong side, <laughs> and you'd have to come up to a roundabout so you'd be cruising up to the roundabout. You had to downshift with your left hand. Then you had to flip on the turn signal to say where you're going to go in that roundabout because they actually have rules about that in New Zealand. In America, they don't. I noticed that. Uh, people just, they get into roundabouts, and you have no clue where they're going. Anyway, so, yeah, I would get up there. Boy, I'm getting all prepared, downshift and all that, and then flick on the turn signals, except it's the windshield wipers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows where I'm going, but they know where I'm from. <laughs> Not there. So that was bad. So we decided to take a song. Now, how many of you have ever heard of the song, Do Right? Do right till the stars fall. Well, our song is called Do Left instead of Do Right. OK? So piano? You ready? <laughs> no. Oh, no. We, we're not using piano. We're singing a cappella. OK. So here we go. Left is always right, and right is always wrong, so you must learn to drive upon the left. If you drive on the right, you'll probably lose your life, so drive upon the left and not the right. Do left if you want to live, do left, or your life you'll give, do left. If you want to stay alive, do left, or you're on your own, do left, or no car you'll own, do left, or you'll see God's throne, do left, do left. So there you go. It did, it did help us think about where we were driving. Anyway, in our presentation tonight, I want you to understand it is not just us in the ministry there. We have a wonderful group of missionaries there and national pastors, and we, we all work together. We have a, a tremendous fellowship, and some of the pictures with lots of people in it are generally combined activities with our churches. So it'll be several churches together in those. Uh, when we talk about Pastor Jono, um, the building we're in at that point is a building we saw. We were able to build that building with so many miracles to get that building built. And so I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to think, oh, that's Pastor Piper. That's all his ministry. There's thousands of people there or something. No, that's combined activities, okay? Our church currently is a, the first two churches we're in run about 150. They're self supporting and they have their own pastors now. And the one we're in now has about 60 people or so, has a real good spirit. It's mostly um, adults. We have some children, and it's, it's going really well. But again, it's a combined effort with our churches around the country. And we, we do point out a few different missionaries in there that also are great friends, and we work together. So I hope it'll be a great blessing to you to see that God is working in New Zealand. I, in the older folks' Sunday school, well, I shouldn't have said older folks, should have I? Um, in the Senior Saint Sunday School, was that what I was in? What was, what was that? What is it? Young at Hearts. Yeah, that's what we had in Rotorua, too, our church there. And they actually gave me this tie, the Young at Hearts. And this looks like our Pawa shell in New Zealand, okay? And the Young at Hearts gave it to me, and later I was at an airport and saw that it costs a lot of money. And I said, you guys shouldn't have spent all that money. And they said, well, we want you to take a part of New Zealand and display it all over America and let people see the beautiful shell that we have in New Zealand that's special there. So anyway, they, we love our young at heart. But as I was talking to them this morning, I told them about a few things that are discouraging with the government and all that. But even though the government does evil things, God can still work. That's right. And the reality is, in history, in the past, during times where it was easy to be a Christian, the church got very soft. But at times when the church was under pressure is when true Christians stood up and took a stand for the Lord. So anyway, I'm thankful for what God is doing there, and I hope this video will be a great encouragement to you.
Amazing God-given natural beauty is seen around every corner of our little island country of New Zealand, found 2,000 kilometers off the southeastern coast of Australia. We are thankful to be reminded of the beautiful creation of our Lord, but we're also saddened by the darkness of sin in this country. Through the influence of missionary Bob McLean, God directed our family to come to New Zealand 24 years ago. Bob asked for help with starting churches, running a Christian camp, and starting a Bible training program. We have endeavored to help in each of these areas throughout the years. We ministered in the church in Hamilton for six years, and we're thankful that the church there is doing well under the leadership of Pastor John O. Miller, a young man we helped to train. John O. and his wife, Christy, have developed into real leaders in reaching New Zealand for Christ. John O. has been pastoring there now for 18 years. I was privileged to help as they built a beautiful church building that has hosted many events. In 2005, God moved us to Rotorua, where we worked to bring Rotorua Bible Baptist Church to a place to become self-supporting. It was during this ministry that Craig and Leanna Comstock and their three children joined us as co-workers. Our son Garrett, who got his degree at Faithway Bible College in Canada, was ordained in the church in Rotorua. We are thankful that when we left the church, it was debt-free and they were now self-supporting. Also, during this ministry, Peter B. Scott was saved in Rotorua after receiving a gospel tract. He then discovered our church and grew in our ministry for several years. He then went on to a church in the South Island for further training and has now been serving for nine years as a missionary in Romania with his wife, Kate. They are getting ready to start a new church soon. The week-long youth camp that I have directed for many years is always a great highlight to our youth. Lynette, Craig, and Leanna help greatly to see that the details of camp are sorted out. Many life-changing decisions have happened at camp. We also have a multi-church family camp once a year in Hamilton, directed by Pastor Jono, and the South Island has their own as well. These are great times of fellowship and spiritual refreshment. Toward the end of 2015, God made it clear that there was a great need to start a church on the west coast of the North Island. The city of New Plymouth had no independent fundamental Baptist church. We, along with our co-workers, Craig and Leanna Comstock, and their three children, spent a year driving back and forth two weekends a month as we met with a small group of believers that had previously been part of a small country church that had closed. In December 2016, we had our first service of Lighthouse Independent Baptist Church. This church is predominantly made up of Kiwis, but God has also brought the world to us. We now have people from various countries in our church. Those countries include people from the Philippines, South Africa, China, Korea, USA, India, and of course, New Zealand. Our churches that we have ministered in are, by definition and practice, independent fundamental Baptist churches. We still hold to the fundamentals of the faith, the King James Bible, conservative music, and conservative standards of separation from the world. Our church services include Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday evenings, Wednesday prayer meetings, along with children and youth activities, as well as ladies and men's Bible studies, and events like Mother's Day luncheons and men and boys campouts and other activities. Several weeks a year, we teach in the New Zealand Baptist Bible Training Program, a unique program where the students go to the different pastors who teach block classes for one to three weeks at a time. The students are hosted and provided with dinner each day, and they are able to see different ministries and serve in them. This is preparing youth for future ministries in our churches. This is an extremely busy time as some of the students stay in our home and the classes are in our home. This program is directed by fellow missionary Guy Bankston, and numerous Kiwi pastors and missionaries teach in this program. So far, 33 students have gone through the program, either receiving one or two year certificates. Recently, we were blessed to be part of an ordination for Cody Hirami, a young man that got saved in Rotorua after our son invited him to church. Grant and several others from our church were involved in the Army Cadets, as was Cody. We had a short time to disciple Cody before he went off into the New Zealand Army. Though he floundered spiritually for a while, 
He was based at a camp near a sister church in Palmerston North. He grew spiritually through the years and decided to quit the army and be more involved in God's army by training in our Bible program. The Lord provided a wife that also went through the program and they're serving the Lord together in their local church. Cody has recently become assistant pastor. It's been exciting to see young people trained to serve the Lord more effectively. Anthony and Caitlin from our church in New Plymouth have both completed the two-year New Zealand Baptist Bible training program and are both serving faithfully while working or studying. Please pray for the Lord's guidance in Anthony's life as he seeks God's direction for a wife and future ministry possibilities. Having a servant's heart goes a long way. Though New Zealand is a land of great natural beauty, it has a dark underbelly. Satan has worked his wiles here and many are bound in the chains of sin. In recent years, smash and grabs and ram raids on businesses have become far too common. Unfortunately, New Zealand has also been a leader among the world in legalizing many things that God calls abominations. It seems as though in New Zealand and around the world, evil has become even more bold and prideful. Kiwis need deliverance through salvation by Jesus Christ our Lord. Evil seems to be winning, but we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, and that the Lord is more powerful than Satan, and God will be victorious in the end. We are thankful that God is still using our children. Lydia, our daughter, her husband Cameron, and their three boys have been continuing to minister in the South Island. They minister in Timaru Bible Baptist Church on Sunday mornings and have a Sunday p.m. service in their home as they reach out to the people in their area, which is about 45 minutes from town. As many of you know, Cameron and Lydia and our family went through a difficult trial this year as we saw our wonderful eight-year-old grandson, Zeke, suffer with cancer for six and a half weeks and to be called home to be with the Lord. We are thankful for Zeke's strong faith and testimony for the Lord. Through this trial, we know of at least six people who have made decisions to trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lydia has made so many friends, saved and unsaved in their area, and many have heard the gospel, especially through this trying time. Thank you for your prayers for our whole family during this trial. God did show himself strong through your prayers and kind words. A blessing is the baby that God has given to bring some sunshine into their lives. Garrett, our son, pastored a small church in Tokoroa, New Zealand, for five years. Now their family has been living in Becca's hometown and helping in the ministry there. They are considering moving to a city about two hours from us to help a struggling church there. Their four children are now homeschooling. Grant, our youngest son, has carried on in his service with the military. He has recently returned from a six-month deployment. Olivia is glad to have him home to help take care of their two children who are two and under. Grant and Olivia also have been through difficult times as they have lost two unborn children. Please pray for them as family life can be difficult around deployments. I have had some serious health issues since our last furlough in 2019. I had a very large kidney stone removed as well as having two heart procedures with stints implanted in my heart. But by God's grace, I seem to be having a complete recovery. In the last few years, there have been several wonderful missionaries that have either retired or needed to leave New Zealand for health reasons. Thankfully, we have a few new young missionaries come, but the need is still great. In Matthew 9, 37 and 38, it says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Would you consider God using you to meet the need in New Zealand? All right, Brother Garth, would you come to the uh, pulpit, please? I'm going to ask you a few questions. Brother Williams, if you would like to grab a microphone, if you would like to ask him any. So 24 years. Yes. And we saw a lot of that fruit. Yep. And I wonder, I, I know from speaking with you, but folks in here would not know, um, 
New Zealand is a Europe mentality where right. it's very, uh, it's more, it's farther along the line than the United States, more mm -hmm. socialistic yep. and things like that, um, more controlling by the government and all that. But what are the people like? I mean, we're seeing 24 years of fruit on your pictures, mm -hmm. but what, it, what is it like soul winning and what is it like sharing the gospel in New Zealand? Is, are people cold and closed? Well, it depends on where you were. When we were in the city of Hamilton, there was a very large um, Mormon population there. So as soon as we opened our mouths and we had an American accent, they thought we were Mormons, especially since I wore a white shirt a lot and occasionally a name tag. Anyway, <laughs> they, uh, so they were a little cold that way. But we found mostly with Kiwis, if you just try to present the gospel straight to them, they won't, they won't listen to you. They'll turn away. As a matter of fact, on, on the street, if you're trying to pass out tracts and things, many people will cross the street to avoid you, so they won't, they won't be, even be on the same side. So they're, they're not easy to approach cold turkey like that. But it's much more effective to kind of get to know them a little bit and then present the gospel to them. And other people in church that will bring them along to different activities. Like Brother Cody, when he got saved, he had been invited along to church and to youth activities and men's activities probably 30 or 40 times. Wow. But he said what made a difference in his life was seeing our son and Calvin and Mikey and uh, Nikki that were involved in cadets and seeing that their lives were different is what made the difference for him. And that's what we found in a number of the people there, is if they see true Christianity in your life, it gives you that opportunity to share the gospel with them. So, yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there any restrictions with the government as far as church is concerned where uh, there are certain things you can and can't do? Well, there's one thing we can do that you can't do here, and that's we can put things in, in mailboxes. They call it letter boxes over there. So we do take flyers from our church that have the gospel on them. I wrote another flyer that was about hope during COVID. We were passing those out because people were freaking out about everybody's going to die and, and all that. So we were, I was able to do a, um, a it's basically a, a track with a message of hope on it as well. And we were able to pass that out. We try to do it to all the houses in the city. And that usually takes about, about 11 or 12,000 flyers. There's about 70,000 people in the, in the city. So anyway, we try to do that. We can do that in their letter boxes. And of course, some people don't want it. So we do get nasty comments and um, potentially death threats about passing things out. But, you know, it doesn't matter. We're just going to keep passing them out because Man. people need it. And, and several of the people you saw in the photos were, are in our church now because of those things. So we can do that. When it comes to preaching, um, they are getting very strict, and they're, they're right now trying to do some hate speech laws that are taking hate speech away from... Hate speech was always illegal, but hate speech was if you say something that causes violence toward someone or a group of people. That's been illegal for a long time. But now they're trying to change the definition of that to be saying something that hurts somebody's feelings. Hmm. And that's going to be prosecutable. And one of the things dealing with the whole homosexuality, transgender, and that whole stuff, they passed a law recently about the anti-conversion therapy that basically they've said, you cannot discuss those topics <clears throat> with people if you are seen to be trying to convert them away from those lifestyles. Because if you do, you can get four year, or five years in prison, and there's not even an exemption for parents talking to their own children. So it is getting quite difficult in some areas. But we're still going to teach the truth. We're still going to preach the truth. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't come to this, but I said we may be starting a prison ministry from the inside, but that's not my plan, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but if it comes to that, that's what it will be. But yeah. anyway. Uh, another question I have is, New Zealand is two main islands, is that right. correct? North and south? Yes. And so you have primarily been on the North Island? We've been ministering on the North Island in our churches. There are other missionaries on the South Island, and we, I've gone down and spoke down there numerous times in different churches, and then 
also uh, camps and things. And so we do both, but mostly on the North Island for us. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions at all? Sure. Um, you've mentioned, I think we were at lunch, you were talking about the co-laboring spirit uh -huh. that's among churches. Yeah. Describe that, if you would, just, just the laboring together with Christ. Right. It's, it's really amazing because, like, about the first year we were there, we'd gone along to a camp, but it was some other missionaries that had been there, and they, had, they were in a different organization, and they had gone quite liberal. And we'd gone to this camp, and when we went there, we had a bunch of our young people, and one of the young boys was a newly saved uh, Korean boy. And we're in this service, and the young boy says to me, I thought we were coming to a Christian camp. Mm -hmm. Now, he was only newly saved. And I was, my heart was breaking over what was going on. So I, I told these fellows, we can't do a camp if you're going to go this direction. We just can't do that. So the next year, another pastor and myself and a couple others decided we'd start a, a fundamental Christian camp. Hey. And that's been going on now for 22 years. So in that, we then had this combined fellowship amongst churches and stuff. And the Bible training program is part of it. The, the camp, the youth camp is part of it. The family camps are part of it as well. We now have family camps on South Island and North Island because it's pretty expensive to travel between the two. But the really good thing is that now people from all these different churches know people in all the other churches and so whenever they travel anywhere for business or for holiday, or then they just go to those other churches and they feel like they're right at home yeah. because they have these friends that they communicate with on, maybe they use Facebook or they use other things. And they're, it's like one big family and it's so good. And the key to that really has been that the pastors, the, the missionary pastors, the national pastors, these guys are all humble guys that are not trying to build a big name for themselves and you know build up pride, but Man. instead they're humble servants of the Lord. Amen. And it's been so good to have that fellowship together. Because it wasn't like that 24 years ago. So okay. yes. Something else? Okay. Now I gotta ask this question. Do you have yep. a pet koala bear? <laughs> pet koala? Yeah. They're in Australia. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are they really? There's none in New Zealand? No. I thought there was. No. Okay. We, we do have Australian bush-tailed possums. Okay. And they're, they're, uh, they're uh, protected in Australia. But in New Zealand, they're a pest. So we shoot them all the time. Oh, sorry. If you're an animal lover, I apologize. But it's the reality. They do. But no. And well, we, do, we do have wallabies. That's small kangaroos. Okay. And they're from Australia. We do have Australian imports, but not koala bears. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for setting me straight. Yeah. All right. He is a, a, a pretty good hunter and, and fisherman, so the, you'll hit, uh, hit home here if you talk about anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, we do do that stuff because a lot of, there were no mammals in New Zealand originally, and so until some people came on ships and brought rats, the only other mammal was two types of bat. But in New Zealand now, there's six different types of deer, and there's no hunting seasons for them, so you can shoot them anytime. There's goats. I was talking to a guy about making goat jerky. Um, and you say, goat jerky? You couldn't tell it's not beef jerky, I'm telling you. And we shoot the wallabies. That was what you saw me holding with Zeke. Zeke, before he died, he's, he was like, Grandpa, I just really want to shoot a wallaby. And so he, he could hardly walk 30, 40 yards. But one of the guys from their, from their evening Bible study, our son and daughter's Bible study, son-in-law and daughter's Bible study, he said, oh, we've been having some wallabies coming up close to our house. And I said, well, do you mind if I bring Zeke over? And do you mind if I borrow your rifle? <laughs> and he said, no, that's fine. So we went over there, and sure enough, we saw one, and it was fairly close, and Zeke was able to shoot it. And he was so excited. And it was only, it was only probably 50 yards up this little hill and I said, Zeke, do you want to go up there with me to get it? It was quite steep, but not far. And he said, Grandpa, I can't walk that far because the cancer had already taken a big toll on him. And I went up and I got it and I brought it back and he was all excited and he said, are we going to be able to eat this tomorrow? And I said, yeah, we will. So we ground it all up into hamburger type 
meet. And he was all excited. And then he's like, Grandpa, do you think I could shoot a buck before, you know, I get too sick? And I'm like, I'd love to take you out, but the reality was he was too weak. And I told him, though, I said, actually, Zeke, the wallaby you shot was a male wallaby, and they're actually called bucks. And he said, so you actually did shoot a buck already. And he's like, Mom, Mama, I shot a buck. And Daddy, I shot a buck, you know, and he was all excited. So anyway, yeah. but yeah, if you want to come over and shoot some of those wild animals, by the way, if you see a deer, uh, a New Zealand deer hunting show on TV, I'm going to tell you right now, what you will see primarily will be f fake, okay? It will be very rich people shooting deer that were raised on a farm that were released maybe a couple weeks earlier, and the people will pay ten to $20,000 to shoot them. And they'll put that on TV because it looks so amazing. But if you come with me, we're walking for hours and hours up in the mountains, and you got to carry it out after you shoot it. So uh, get in shape. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Appreciate that. Amen and amen. All right. I'm going to ask the men to come forward, please, tonight for our evening offering. If you'd like to be a blessing and, and give towards the Pipers, uh, we always give a love gift for, for our missionaries coming in. If you'd like to be a part of that, you're welcome to do that. If you just mark that on your envelope, please. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Gunther to come. He's going to pray tonight, and uh, his daughter will come as well and help us out. I guess we should get a mic. Can you grab one of those microphones, please? That would be helpful. Amen. All right. Wonderful. Brother Gunther, would you come over? Would you ask the Lord's blessing, please? Dear Heavenly Father, praise the Lord. Thank you for this special opportunity that we have as brothers in Christ to get ready to share with us his special ministry in New Zealand. Lord, please, I know that you've already touched my heart about it already with the people there in other countries, and they still need the gospel. Lord, <coughs> let us show our love through offerings to show that we really care and to be able to bless their families and use that money for your glory, Lord. I ask you to please bless this offering for your precious name. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Brother Stanley, what was the name? It is finished? Very good. That was wonderful. These two jokes are from none other than George Mullis III. He's been anxious for me to tell these jokes. 
So I'm not sure if he's here tonight, but here they are. Why did the bicycle fall over? It was too tired. That was awful, awful, awful. How do you cut the ocean in half with a seesaw? Anyway, we're going to have a very short handshaking time for you to recover from those jokes. Please shake three people's hands and we'll come right back. Go ahead and make your way back to your seats. Remain standing and sing with me. Song number 228. 228, a great one written by Fanny Crosby many years ago. He hideth my soul. This is a good one. We'll sing the first and the last. 228, he hideth my soul. Sing it with me on the first now. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. blessing having the pipers with us and uh, we get to see them about once every four years or so and uh, but I'm glad uh, praise the Lord they get to be here in West Virginia and now uh, amen and so I'll pray and it's time for preaching because we'll have a special you ready okay all right we'll have a special and then he'll preach Lord we love you and I thank you so very much for just like-minded uh, uh, Lord uh, saved individuals that just want to give the gospel to folks on the other side of the world. Lord, thank you for New Zealand. Thank you for the influence, uh, Lord, the, the gospel being preached there. Thank you for the souls saved through the years. And, Lord, the church is started. Uh, Lord, uh, the, the next church that uh, is going right now, Lord, he talked about having 60 people there. And I pray, God, that you just strengthen that church in their absence, Lord, and allow it to continue to grow and to be strengthened, Lord. And uh, would you continue to use the pipers, please? Bless him now as he comes to preach, and, and uh, Lord, would you just use the Word of God and the man of God tonight, Lord, to speak to us, please, in Jesus' name, amen. For that, or no? 
Oh, after we're done? Okay. All right. Amen. He's given his word in this precious old book and it speaks to my heart every time that I look. He loves me and he helps me when I'm tempted to sin. Through Christ my Lord, over Satan I win. And I Blessings and fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. And I am amazed that He take the time to give me such blessings. Is this how we're doing it? Yeah, just right here. Oh, Sorry, just. I asked, I asked uh, Pastor John if we could get a quick photo. Um, I know that sounds odd. Do you want my phone? Or you got a phone? We won't touch him otherwise. Yeah, because he's got a meeting afterwards and stuff, and we just wanted to look at him and smile and say cheese. Jethro, Jethro. What are you going to do with family, right? Amen. 
Well, I got to say that wasn't too bad. Almost as good as the missionaries, but anyway, no, I'm only kidding. You don't compare. You do not compare. It's a blessing to see people, young people, singing their heart out to the Lord, too. That's really good. And, uh, you know, uh, Brother John, Pastor John, Brother John, John Boy, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> he has been a great blessing. He and his wife and the family have been a great blessing to us through the years, and we're very thankful for them. And, uh, yeah, we were kind of like some of the family back home. We were like, they're leaving? What? No, we didn't know. They can't do that. But anyway, Lord knows, and the Lord puts us where he wants us to be. And you know, with us too, with our grandson Zeke, we had no idea that we were going to be going through this trial this year. And I, I know in a way the trial was much easier for us than many people who have gone through cancer because Zeke's cancer was a very short time. But it was very, it was very drastic in how it affected him over such a very short time. Because um, we were all having a great time at Christmas time. It was wonderful. We were out there doing some fishing, and they came up for my 60th birthday. And I know that should shock you that I am 60 years old because I, I really feel like I look about 40. But anyway... <laughs> But they'd come up for my 60th birthday, and they were celebrating with us, because they live on the South Island. If we drove down to their place, it'd be about a 13-hour drive plus a three-hour ferry crossing. And so we will fly down there occasionally, but they drove up and took the ferry, and they were there for my birthday in the middle of December, and then Christmas, and then our family camp right afterwards. And we all were having a great time together. And you know, some, some people have been taught, in a way, sort of a false belief about when someone comes to know Christ as Savior. Some, some have been taught, if you, if you trust in Christ as Savior, your life is going to be wonderful, and you're not going to have problems anymore. It's just going to be an amazing, wonderful life. But you know, that's not what the Bible teaches, because Christians go through trials, and, you know, people that have been taught that if you trust Christ, everything's going to be wonderful. When something all of a sudden comes into their life and it's, it's devastating, they often turn their back on God. And they reject God. And they get bitter. And they leave, they leave church, they leave God, and they no longer want to have anything to do with God. But the reality is we... When we trust Christ as Savior, we still have trials we go through, but we have a God that goes through those trials with us. And as, as our family got this diagnosis, we, we, they had been with us at family camp, and the, the picture of Zeke holding the laser gun, that was, that was in de, the last week of December at family camp. And a couple of those other photos were right toward the very end of his life. And he seemed like he was fine. But then when my, my daughter and son-in-law went down to the South Island, back home, there was a South Island family camp. And they went to that camp, and one of the ladies was a nurse. And she said, Zeke looks like he's got a bit of swelling in his abdomen. You need to take him in and get it checked. So they checked him, and they thought, oh, it's maybe just some blockage in his intestines or whatever. So they tried to treat him for that for a couple days. And then they, they took him back, and they did a scan, and they found all these tumors. And they told us, he only has a few weeks to live, and there's nothing we can do. Well, my wife and I got on a plane. We immediately flew down there uh, to be with them. And my, my son and daughter-in-law and their kids, they came down as well um, uh, toward the second week of February. And we all cared for Zeke together. We all took turns, and we helped and. We stayed with him uh, 24 hours a day the last month and a half of his life. And we just cared for him, and we did everything we could to try to comfort him. But my wife did something. She took a video, and she, she, we, had, we had had a few different videos. I had taken a video of Zeke playing piano, and, and he was goofy as, man, because he, he would play piano, but he'd be swapping his, 
he'd have his legs crossed one way, then he'd cross them the other way while he's playing, and he'd cross them back, and he was so funny. Anyway, he, was, he, he liked doing, and he only played a few songs, but he was, he was doing that. And then my wife took a video. She said, I want to do a little interview with you, Zeke. And she asked him, she said, if you die, where are you going to be? He said, I'm going to be in heaven. And she said, well, how do you know that? And he said, because I, I knew that I was a sinner and I knew that I needed Jesus to save me. And I prayed and asked him to be my savior. And I know that the Bible tells us, tells us that. And I, I know that and I believe that. And I know I'll be with God. And she, she has that video, and that video was played at his funeral and everything. And through his testimony, like we said, at least six people have trusted Christ. We don't know how many others. But, you know, sometimes when these situations come, we say, why me? Or why us? Why are we the ones going through this trial? And, you know, I can only look to one person in the Bible that kind of went through those sort of things, and that's Job. If you take your Bibles quickly and turn to Job... I usually try to start preaching after a church is normally done with their service. But anyway, um, it happens to me all the time. But anyway, in Job chapter 1, you see that God describes Job as being a perfect and upright man. In verse number 1 there, it says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, I am not saying I am Job, okay? I, I'm not. I, I, I don't think God would describe me as being perfect. Now, I try not to sin, but you know what? I'm still a sinner, and I still need God's grace. But one of the reasons I do not consider myself Job, because if that were the case, then my wife would be Job's wife. And if you know the story... Yeah, she said, curse God and die. And well, that's not my wife, okay? She's not there. But anyway, so Job, though, he went through a great trial of affliction. He went through a trial far greater than the trial that our family has gone through. Job went through a trial where he lost his children. He lost all of his possessions. He lost everything. But you know... Job, even though he went through all those trials, in Job chapter 2, verse number 3, it says this. It says, And the Lord said to Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Job held on to his integrity. Job didn't turn away from the integrity of following God and worshiping God, even though everything had been taken away from him. And folks, that's because Job, later he says, you know, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. He understood that the things of this earth are not guaranteed. And we're not guaranteed to have a wonderful life that nothing will ever go wrong. But Job knew that he had a God that would never leave him or forsake him. And folks, as we go through trials in our life, as we go through hard times in our life, the world needs to see how, how a Christian is supposed to be through those things. And if they see a Christian being a Christian through those trials, it can change other people's lives. Because people expect us to get angry with God and get bitter with God and to turn our back when we see hard things come. And when John was saying um, that it was amazing to see how our, our, our family reacted through this whole trial, you know, it wasn't easy. We cried because we saw our, our grandson change dramatically over a short period of time. And he, he didn't look anything like he had just a month or two months before. He had changed so much. And you know, my daughter was not very private about what was going on. Because our lives as missionaries, now I, I know it's not the same with everybody, but we are very public people, okay? 
And our house, we have people in our house a lot, and, and we just, what you see is what you get, okay? We're, we're not going to be one person here and somebody else somewhere else. It's just there all the time. And when we're going through a hard time, we want people praying. Now, I know some people, they'll go through a hard time, and they will go into themselves, and they'll get very quiet, and they won't want to talk to people. Well, we wanted people praying. We wanted people to know what was going on. And so we told people what was going on. And, and our daughter, she shared what was going on in her heart. And we, we did as well. And, you know, we, we knew there were thousands of people praying for us. From people on this Facebook page my wife is part of, late, uh, Baptist missionary wives. There were missionary wives and their families and their churches all over the world praying for us. And there were people in churches in America, people in churches in other countries too that were just people who heard about it. And folks, we need God's people when we go through trials. And isn't, wasn't Job so excited about his friends that came to encourage him? You say, I know the book of Job. Yeah, there's a lot of chapters there that they didn't encourage him too well. But you know, I want you to, I want you to think about what they did though Job's friends there. Because Job's friends, when they first came, they actually sat with him for a week and didn't say anything. But they mourned with him over what he had gone through. And you know, I believe those men actually were trying to help Job, though they read the, the whole situation wrong, because their only view was, you must be doing evil if God's doing this to you. But those men, I believe, genuinely were wanting to help Job. They just didn't get it right. And you may have friends that do the exact same thing when you're going through a trial. But, you know, God brings Christian friends into our lives to help us as we go through deep trials. And I hope you will make the people in this church and other Christian friends you know around the world, like, like I said, the people in New Zealand, even as our family was going through this trial, we had so many friends that were there in New Zealand that were praying for us and willing to help in any way they could. And it was amazing, the love of God that was shown onto our family through that trial. Now, folks, if you go through a trial here, this church family is here for you. And you need to let them do it. See, because sometimes we don't. Sometimes a trial comes and people say, oh, let me help. And you're like, no, no, I'll be fine. I'll do it myself. And we, we, we push them back. Don't do that. Welcome their help. And let them be an encouragement to you. Because, you know, in this situation, you know, people gave money as well. And we tried alternative treatments and things with Zeke. But none of those things were able to do and help him too much. But, you know, people wanted to show love and care. And they did. And it was great. But one of the things my daughter said was... You know, people say, well, why me? Why should we go through a trial like this? And to be honest, folks, I've gone through, I've had a number of people that we have loved deeply that have died young, and I've said, Lord, these people are wanting to serve you. Even Zeke, he and uh, his brother Josiah, they would practice preaching to their younger brothers. You know, one would be leading the singing, and they would do this in the morning as part of their homeschooling, and They'd be leading the singing, and the other one would preach a bit, and then they would swap, and the, one would, the other one would lead singing, the other one would preach, and the, the two younger boys, they just they got really spiritual because they got a lot of preaching. But anyway, they, that's what they, they love the Lord, and they would do that. And other, some other people I've known that have died young, and I've thought, Lord, why these ones that die young? Why these ones that want to follow you? Why would you take them? Well, you know, I, don't, I, can't, under, I can't explain it. Exactly. But, you know, I, I just believe that maybe they were the ones that God just wanted them to avoid a lot of the heartaches that go on here on this earth. And they wanted them to be with them. But, you know, my daughter said, why not us? We believe in the Lord. And our son is in heaven. And he is rejoicing in heaven now. And if it's someone else who's without Christ, 
And they have this happen so often, they are so devastated that their families are destroyed. But yet, because God chose our family for this, we can be a testimony to them about what God can do in their life. And you know, we saw God work in a lot of people's lives. And a lot of people, even since we've been back in America, um, we came back the middle of July, and I, I think this church is the 15th church we've been to since the middle of July. And every single one, the people have been so compassionate and so caring and so loving. And I really believe Zeke, though he was very young, he touched a lot of lives with his short life. And folks, as we go through trials, we need to understand if we try to save our life, we're going to lose it. But if we give our life to the Lord, he can use that however he sees fit. And folks, Pastor John's here. He's trying to help, you know, help people here to follow the Lord. And a number of the assistant pastors and stuff and all, they're doing that as well. And, and teachers and all that. But folks, follow God no matter what. Don't get bitter. Be like Job. Hold on to your integrity through all those trials that you come into your life. Folks, God loves you. And he wants you to come to know Christ as Savior. Zeke was six years old when he trusted Christ. He died a week before his ninth birthday. But you know, he had a confidence in Christ because he knew what the Bible said and he believed it. And folks, that is where our hope is. Just the day before Zeke died, my family, we, we were standing outside and we were, my daughter said, I want us to sing this song, My Hope is Jesus. And some of you might have heard that before. It's a Ron Hamilton song. And it talks about the Lord being the anchor to our soul. And we sang that together. And of course, I messed it up at the very end. And my one son was videoing us as well. And I, I messed up the ending and I'm like, oh, you know, what you're never supposed to do when you're singing something. But I thought we were practicing. And then after we got done, my, my daughter said, that's good. That's good. And I'm like, no, it's not good. I kind of went, ooh, at the end, you know, and it was bad. She goes, no, I'm putting it on YouTube. That's it. And I'm like, come on, let us sing it again, you know. And she's like, nope, it's just going on like it is. And, you know, though I kind of goofed it up at the end, the message was there. Our hope is Jesus. And folks, I hope your hope is Jesus too. Make sure Jesus and his saving grace is in your life. And then show that to people around you. And you may have to show it through a trial. But live for Christ day by day in the good times and in the bad times. The Lord loves us through all those times. And he doesn't give up on us. Make your hope, Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for tonight. And Lord, I do thank you for this wonderful church. And Lord, for the numerous lives they've reached through the years. And Lord, I pray that they will have much more fruit for their labors. But Lord, I pray that most of all, they will understand that their hope is in Jesus. And Lord, they need to show that hope to the world around them. And Lord, I pray that they will see much, much more fruit for their labors. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, please. You know, as I was watching that family, uh, their family go through that, I kept thinking, what if that was my family? How would I respond? And that was convicting. What he said tonight was, follow Jesus. And trust him. I wonder, could you and I trust Jesus in a trial like that? When God decides to take an eight-year-old boy and give him cancer that can't be changed, that's incurable. Six weeks to live. When I consider that, I think about the trials that God has asked me to go through, and they seem so minor, but they're still the trials that God has asked us. I wonder, how are we responding to that? Let's stand together, please. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not saved. 
Hope is in Jesus. Come get saved. Amen. But maybe tonight you just use the altar and say, Lord, help me to be faithful no matter what. Help me to continue to be what you want me to be no matter what comes my way. Whether it's something with my health or my children or whether it's something with my job or whether it's something with distant family and relatives or whatever it is, God, help me to be faithful no matter what. Maybe, church family, we would think about others among us. We're all family in here. And I wonder, maybe there's somebody that God put on your heart to just pray for tonight. Lord, this person's going through this struggle. This friend of mine is going through this issue. Would you help them to stay faithful? And may I be the friend that I need to be to encourage them. Let's consider these things tonight. Lord, be glorified by what is done here in this invitation time. Thank you for using the life of the Piper family, Lord, and the lives of the Piper family. And I, I ask you, God, to help us, convict us, show us, teach us tonight, Lord. Not only to receive Christ as our Savior, Lord, tonight, if somebody here is not saved, but also, Lord, to go and, and show that to others and encourage others and spread the, the news of Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. God, sometimes that's through testimony of a, a difficult trial. I pray that we would be found faithful. Help us and challenge us tonight during this invitation, please. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. What a great song. This solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Lord, thank you again for this invitation time, for the message, Lord, the presentation tonight, all of it. And God, it was an encouragement to me, and I needed it, and I thank you for it. Thank you for your people being faithful in your house tonight. And Lord, I pray this week that we would not be stuck on ourselves and look into our own things and, and, and our, our faces in the dirt, Lord, looking where our two feet are planted. But God, may we rise and look at you, looking unto Jesus. Lord, the author and finisher of our faith, God, may we, may we remember that, God, you have asked us to be here and you've put us here and you put us here for a reason. And I pray, God, that you challenge us this week to be witness for you and, Lord, to live the life you've asked us to and to stay faithful to it. Thank you, God, for a great church and a great group of people tonight that do serve you. And I ask you that you'd, give, you'd bless us and give us strength to, do the, to live for you this week. Lord, I love you and I thank you. And I ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Church, I'm going to ask you to be seated tonight. And uh, Brother, Brother Garth, would you stay right there? I ask him to stay right here. Hey, here's a like-minded man serving with his wife and has lived for 24 years on the mission field. And he's going to live for another 24 years on the mission field, hopefully. Amen. Hopefully. Amen. All right. He uh, uprooted and, and God wanted him to go and he took his young family and and uh, planted there in New Zealand, and, and now his, two of his kids are over there too. Amen. That's the way you do it. God just put his heart right there in New Zealand. And um, I'd like to entertain a motion and take them on for support. Amen. I got one here. I got a second over there. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Welcome to the family, sir. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Brother Williams, would you come, please? He's got something to take care of, and then uh, Brother Jones will finish this in prayer, please. Deacons, don't forget, we got a meeting in just a moment. The only bad thing is that means you'll see us again. <laughs> well, amen. Amen. All right, good. Amen. I love missions. It's great. <clears throat> We're going to look at uh, the missionary Christmas here. Uh, we, of course, talked about it this morning. 
had some cards available. And thank you so much for all those who have committed and already and uh, to give. I know there's Sunday school classes and other ministries. Thank you for that. And again, we're just wanting to be a blessing to our missionaries coming to our conference and on Saturday the 28th. And so put that in your calendar as definitely a date you do not want to miss. And uh, so we're going to have a few other cards here this evening uh, for the Blessing Promise cards. And ask for those who would publicly say, yes, I want to be a part of that. And yes, I want to give uh, towards this and I have a help. Let me give you just a quick thought before we get into the promise cards. And that's this. There have been some who have asked, can I work with another family and uh, partner funds together to get a larger gift? And the answer is absolutely positively yes and uh, coordinate that among yourselves and uh, if you want to go together with our family friend whatever and uh, work together to get a larger gift you are welcome to do that we have a couple larger gifts tonight that we're going to ask for here this evening first of all let's look at the Nathan Lee family and uh, he is in the Middle East um, and that's all we're going to say. We're not going to give locations because of security reasons. Um, but uh, working with Muslims, uh, he is trying to learn the Persian language. And so he is working on that, and he has asked for several books, quite a few books actually that are not here but are back in, on the Welcome Center, and uh, to try to learn and continue learning Persian. So this book here is one of his desires, and uh, 6817, uh, is, there a fa is there an individual that would be able to get this for them? Brother June, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. And if you would go to the uh, church office here in just a few moments at the end of the service, that card will be there waiting for you. Next here is the Joanna Angel, fam uh, Angel family, and in Madagascar, one of our supported missionaries, and uh, their young daughter wants a leap frog leap hat. And uh, so they're excited about that and would like to get that as a desire. So it's 133. Do I have an individual or a family that could do so? Miss Jody, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Likewise, if you would go to the uh, church office here in just a moment, that'll be waiting for you. And then I wish, Bel I wish Ben Stanley was here. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, one of the Williams family, Brett Williams, uh, wants a cowboy hat and to wear out in the jungles of Congo. Miss, miss, okay, all right, you'll take that for Ben. I love it. That's great. And uh, I'm not going to say no, amen? And so that's wonderful. And I said we're going to do a larger one, and we are. And uh, here is a power generator that a family needs in South Africa. They do not have 24-7 power. Um, and this is a desire and really a need as well so they can continue communicating and working together and helping of course to stay connected and to keep uh, their food and such from going bad and all those things there and so this will be a partial generator to keep some uh, some essential items uh, in power during that time it's twelve hundred dollars this is a little bit of a special item and I'll explain that to her we'll explain that to you uh, as you get uh, as you get the card and uh, but it's an international purchase it's for twelve hundred do I have a family or families that would say I'll go together and get that thank you very much I appreciate that brother Spears and I appreciate that very very much there are many other cards they are available in just a moment and uh, they're at the welcome center and so if you would please, as soon as Brother Jones says amen, work your way there. And uh, I'll be up in the deacons meeting, avoiding all questions. Um, <laughs> however, my wife knows everything. And uh, so, um, so feel free to ask away. She'll be available for a little bit for practices and things like this and such. Uh, but yes, please ask. The ladies are prepped and ready to go there at the Welcome Center. And so feel free to ask, but if you would go and get it, and what we're asking, let me just teach everyone here quickly, is there's two cards, paper clip together. You take the top one, the bottom one has a name and a, a place for a name and a phone number. Simply put your name, phone number on it, and give it back to the Welcome Center, and that is all is needed besides you go getting the item and following the instructions on the card. We'll talk more about it if you have questions. See me, see the ladies at the Welcome Center. See Mrs. Stanley, and uh, we're all on the same page, I believe, and we're looking forward to seeing what the Lord's going to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you for investing in missions.
right, these announcements quickly. The playground will not be open tonight. Sorry, Brother Martini, you can't play out there, but there's expected rainfall tonight. Uh, 6 p.m. Tuesday, soul winning. Uh, please make sure you're faithful in your soul winning this week. 7 p.m. Wednesday, Bible study with Next Step and Patch and Peewee. And then 10 a.m. Ladies, soul winning on Thursday in the lobby. And then the next all workers meeting will be Wednesday, October 4th at 6.15 and B400. Widows and widowers that are members of SBBC should have received an invite to the banquet that takes place September 17th. If you did not receive one, please come by the church office or welcome desk. Framed photos of your remembered loved one can be dropped off at the church office window by September 10th. The Medicare class will take place September 18th at 6 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk for those that are interested. Tonight is the last night to sign up for Kayla and Brett's wedding. If you plan to attend, please sign up at the welcome desk so they can plan appropriately. The Young at Heart Fall Activity. If you or your spouse are 55 years or older, our fall trip this year is going to be a scenic train ride on the Potomac Scenic Railroad on October 14th at 7 a.m. A deposit is due to the railroad by September 14th, so please sign up ASAP. Sign up today and buy your ticket by no later than September 24th. Cost is 55 to 59 year olds will pay $65, and 60 year olds, uh, 60 years and older will pay $60. See Mrs. Holly Stanley for more information. And then we are excited to begin preparations for the Missions Conference Christmas Luncheon. If you have already signed up or are interested in being head of one of our tables, please come to the Dev section immediately after the evening service for a quick meeting with Holly Stanley. And then Martinsburg Christian Academy is hosting a Harvest Festival on October the 6th. That'll be from 5 to 9 p.m. If you would be interested in volunteering and hosting a booth for the night, and someone asked me today, can I bring like a booth to sell things? No, these are carnival games uh, that we just need someone to come and help run the booth for the evening. We'll have it all set up for you, and you would just run it for us. And so if you'd be interested in that, there's a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk, or if you'd like to donate some goodies for the night, please see Mrs. Katie Conaway. Please stand with me. We'll pray and then be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the wonderful message from our dear brother Piper. And thank you for the, uh, the fact that we get to take him on and support him. And uh, may he go on and do great things for you as the gospel is preached in New Zealand. Lord, I pray that the gospel would be preached here in Martinsburg this week. Help us to be faithful in telling others about you. Bring us back safely this week uh, to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.
Christ who was slain on that cross has the power.